The former student staff at the Red and Black, including former editor-in-chief Polina Marinova, returned to the newspaper's building after receiving support from several groups of people, including alumni and the Grady College. The Grady College of Journalism released a statement that read in part, The Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communications joins students, alumni, and the community of journalists in defending the rights of students to learn and practice journalism at the Red and Black. The college is gratified that the board of directors of the Red and Black newspaper has reconfirmed the editorial authority of student journalists at the paper and reasserted the role of the advisor as teacher, mentor, and counselor. The college thinks it appropriate that board member Ed Stamper has tendered his resignation. The college deeply regrets the current crisis of leadership at the paper and its effect on students who have put their trust in the red and black. As a place to learn the core skills of journalism, communication, and credibility, the college hopes the newspaper can emerge and grow as a strong and relevant voice to enrich campus life and discourse. The controversy began when a draft memo written by former Red and Black board member Ed Stamper was read by former editor-in-chief Polina Marinova. He resigned from the paper earlier today and released a statement that read, On the morning of August 15th, I typed a draft of list of expectations for our professional staff. On the morning of August 15th, I typed a draft of list of expectations for our professional staff. One of the tasks associated with these responsibilities is collaborating with the student staff to establish content standards and objectives. Since many on our staff are new to this process, I created a two-page list of examples of the types issues which might be raised with talking points and comments. The two pages were attached to the draft list of expectations. Very little thought was given to the form or content because these pages were to reference during a discussion with the editorial director. The documents and attached pages were never intended to be representative of the Red and Black Publishing Incorporated. They were not intended to be viewed as directives from the Red and Black or its board. Nothing in these documents was intended to be representative of the Red and Black's view of journalism. I sincerely apologize for all the embarrassment these documents have caused. I am also terribly saddened by the resulting misunderstanding and its impact on the Red and Black and its loyal, talented staff members. It is personally embarrassing to have the public see a document to I it is personally embarrassing to have the public see a document to I gave little thought and so carelessly worded. The Red and Black Board of Directors also released a statement that read in part. First, I again reiterate on behalf of the board our deepest apologies for the misunderstandings which have brought all of you here. I hope a few brief statements will allow us to bring resolution to several matters. The student editor has always had the final editorial decision responsibility for our news content. That is still the case. The professional staff who work on the editorial side of this newspaper are intended to be coaches and advisors only. We appreciate the passion for excellence in journalism displayed by the students. That same passion for excellence and the love of the red and black motivates our board. We look forward to continuing to provide news coverage to this great university for many years to come in our printed product, our magazine, and our digital first format. The board will accept applications for editor-in-chief and managing editor. The board will select those positions, and those positions will hire the other editors.